Hi, so my waterproof conductive ink is done and I'm pretty pleased with it. It's got a resistivity of around 100 to 120 ohms per square per mil. It's about four times better than anything that else is out there. It's obviously worse than our standard ink, but then it, we knew it would be because of the extra additives that are in here to make it waterproof. And it's uh, a bit of a trade-off really, but with that kind of resistivity, you can really use it for just about anything. And that's really cool. Now, I painted a piece of plastic with it, and I only painted one coat with it, incidentally. It's much better if you paint three coats, where you go one direction, next direction, one direction, and give it time, uh, drying time in between, and that gives a much better job. I just did one coat because I wanted to do the demonstration. Now, the problem with these things is making everything stick to each other. Now, although the paint will stick to the plastic, and it takes a fair amount of wear and tear to get it off, it is without a doubt better if you prime the plastic first. Now there are a whole host of primers that you can buy. You can just go down to the do-it-yourself store and buy yourself a tin of this, that will do the job. If you go to a um, arts and crafts store, they sell different primers. And if you go to a car factors, they sell primers specifically for um, painting cars. Because they are, these days there are a lot of plastic parts on cars and they have primers for priming those plastic parts. UPOL have a series, they call their Series 20, which are specifically for plastics. You, prime, you paint the Series 20 on first, and then you paint your paint on afterward. And that makes sure it's a good bond between the conductive paint and the plastic surface. Not so important if you're doing a um, multifaceted object, like a statuette or a shoe or something like that. It doesn't really matter that much. It's not going to get handled, it's not going to get knocked about. But if you want to do a phone case, it's going to go in and out of somebody's pockets or be thrown on the table or something like that. It's going to get quite a lot of knocks. So you, you're probably better off priming something like that. Whereas something like a statuette or a shoe, you don't need to bother priming it at all. You just, just slap the paint on there and you're ready to go. Now, I'm not an electroplater. It's not the thing that I'm into. I don't know that much about it. I know a little bit, but by no means do I have the same degree of knowledge as an awful lot of electroplaters out there. Now, the person who's done an awful lot of my testing for me and gives me a lot of advice uh, is Diane Middleton and her, and her husband, Hamish. Uh, they run courses on this sort of stuff and they um, have an electroplating shop. They do it as a profession. <laughs> very, very good. They really leave me to shame. You've seen pictures of their work and it's fantastic. Now, I'll give Diane a, a drop her a quick line and see if she'll field some questions for you, but she's the one I turn to when I have problems and, and want answers. What I've got here is an acid copper plating bath. Now, in here is um, 400 milliliters of water. There's um, 45 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate, which is just your normal copper sulfate. There's um, 45 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid, three milliliters of hydrochloric acid, and oddly enough, four Hermocetus tablets. The Hermocetus tablets act as a brightener leveler. They stop the kind of dendrite growth that you would get. They help the plate go on evenly, and that when you come down to polish it, you can polish it up quite nicely. And that's what the Hermocetus do. You can use other levelers and brighteners, and they're available as commercial products, but I find Hermocetus does quite well for demonstrations, so I use Hermocetus. Now, it's easy enough to do, you get yourself a bit of a copper source. Now, my copper source is a piece of wire I pulled out of an old cable, because it's pretty pure copper, and I wrapped it around to form a positive there, and connected it up to the positive of my power source. Now, the actual um, piece itself that you're going to plate, which is your cathode, incidentally, that's your anode, so the piece you're going to plate goes onto your negative source. Now, I put it on a crocodile clip, which is not a particularly good thing to do. You're supposed to put it onto a, a cage, and the cage helps it play it much better. You also have to try and make sure that the face, the um, piece that you want to plate actually faces your piece of copper that you're plating from, and obviously it can't touch it. Now I'm dipping the crocodile clip beneath the surface there, and that's not necessarily a good idea, it'll lead to a build-up around the crocodile clip. Now if we go to this, what you'll see is my heater stirrer, because this heats this heating plate up to 60 degrees centigrade, and that's a good temperature for this kind of bath. So I've put my piece that I want to plate in, and I've just put a little bit of black tape there to hold it in place. 
Now my crocodile clip is actually below the level of the, level of the solution and that's not necessarily a good thing to do. But when it's plated for a little bit, what I want to do is take it out, change its position, take it out, change its position, so that I get an even plate across the thing. Now what I've got here is a benchtop power supply. This one is voltage and current regulated. So I can limit the current that I want and I can alter the voltage. And what I want to do is put in a current of around about two to 300 milliamps. That's quite a slow current. Now initially, the resistance is going to be relatively high. So I won't need to put much voltage on to reach that current. But as it plates, that resistance is going to drop. So what I need to do is alter the voltage so that the current remains constant at around two to 300 milliamps. And with this piece of equipment, I can do that. If you don't have a piece of equipment like this, you're going to have to find some way of regulating the current. Now, I've seen lots of examples. I've seen people do things with um, just normal batteries. They just put a couple of batteries together, connect it all up, and it plays just fine. But I'm going to use this because I've got it. So you connect everything up, make sure it's not touching, turn it on. Now, my voltage is turned right the way down. Now as I turn that voltage knob, you'll see the ampage needle go up. Once it is about three, then it's cooking, it's working. Almost immediately, you'll see the copper starting to be deposited. It grows like a blue from the point of contact. And you don't want it to bubble. If it's bubbling, you've got too much current going through. You just want it to bloom gently out there. It doesn't take long. And you can see the copper already being deposited around the crocodile clip. So let's move the clip. And you leave it in there until you've plated it. Now, as I said, I am by no means an electroplater. And so the job I can do is pretty poor because I don't do it very well. Other people do a much better job. What I'm demonstrating is that the ink can do the job and it does it pretty well, as you can see. Now, if you try to electroplate plastics, you'll find that the um, actual metal won't stick to any plastic surface unless you roughen the plastic surface first. You have to give it going over with some sandpaper. And you can do that to the um, top of the conductive paint before you electroplate it. Now, that isn't a disadvantage because sometimes you want to electroform something. When you electroform something, you take your blank deposit copper and you want it to peel off. And this will peel off quite well if it hasn't been roughened and stick quite well if it has been roughened. So depending on your, what you want to do, either do or don't roughen the surface. But I'm pretty pleased with that. That does quite well in an acid plating bath. In fact, no trouble at all. Uh, what you would do now is burnish that up. A friend tells me to use a soft cloth on a dremel and just go over it until it has bright, shiny copper look to it, apparently. And there we go. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I hope you think it's uh, worth it and I hope you enjoyed watching. The ink is actually for sale now and it's on sale at the FWG website. I'll put the link at the bottom there. And um, thank you very much for watching.